Thank you, Sean, from the State House. Vermont lawmakers return to work in Montpelier. Local 22's Spencer Conlin has more on some of the takeaways from day one. Well, the snow did not deter lawmakers from returning to the Golden Dome this morning for day one of the new legislative session, which will feature lots of new faces and a Democratic stronghold. <laughs> Mitzi Johnson was nominated and elected to a second term as House Speaker Wednesday. The representative from Grand Isle will lead a host of new colleagues. We have to do more to make sure that we have a strong diverse rural economy and agricultural sector moving forward. In November, voters sent a clear message to Montpelier. Democrats and progressives secured a combined veto-proof supermajority. Now it's likely the caucus will champion social issues, including paid family leave. It will put more money into Vermont businesses. It will help our communities to thrive. Democrats did lose one number from Bennington. Kaya Morris resigned after citing racial harassment and threats. Speaker Johnson called on all lawmakers to embrace civility and respect. We have much to do to ensure that all voices are at the table in the crucial discussions we have. The House also assigned members to committees. Perhaps the biggest change comes in transportation. Republican Pat Brennan was ousted as chair after nearly 10 years. Burlington's Kurt McCormick, a Democrat, is in. Just down the hall inside the upper chamber, Senator Tim Ash of Chittenden County was also re-elected to a second term as Senate President Pro Tem. I challenge the Senate to have a more fundamental view of the upcoming two years. Ash looks to push a number of issues to include reducing carbon emissions and repairing the state's Department of Human Services. Ash is also in favor of raising the state's minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. To put it in perspective, a person who makes $1 million a year makes about $50 more in just one hour than a minimum wage worker makes in one full week. Another busy day on tap at the State House tomorrow, where Governor Phil Scott will take the oath of office for his second term. Immediately following that, he will deliver his inaugural address.